all right guys welcome back to the channel it's been a while since uh since i've posted anything but uh today's gonna be the day um we're gonna tackle the brakes on uh the gray hatchback or i call her gunner um it's gonna be a long day so bear with me uh, i'm gonna start with the master cylinder and the booster removal and uh go from there so let's get started all right we have the car pulled out it's just going to be a lot easier to do everything first thing we're going to do is remove the booster well the master cylinder and booster but that's the first things we're going to tackle uh what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to evacuate all the brake fluid out of the whole system so uh, because we're going to break the lines loose and whatnot i don't want any chance of any of this brake fluid getting on any paint uh or minimize it as much as possible so of course i'm going to put rags and whatnot out here but um i'm going to show you what i'm going to use to evacuate the brake fluid well here's what we have guys um you know i built this car back in i think it was 2009 or 10 or so and back then you know times weren't as uh good financially uh you know even right now i mean they're they're okay but back then it's more primitive more limited on funding so what we're looking at is uh i did get back in the day i did get sn95 uh hubs and spindles but look at what we have here guys v6 brakes uh back in the day like i said i couldn't afford to go um you know the cobra brakes and whatnot which is what i always wanted but uh that's actually what we're gonna go with but uh yeah this car does not stop very well never has um so we're gonna change that but uh i'm gonna use a tool here uh as i said earlier um we're gonna drain all the fluid out of the system and what we're gonna use here is this kit from uh harbor freight and uh Basically, we're just going to use this to evacuate all the fluid out of the system from any one of the brake bleeders. I'm just going to start here with the driver front, and uh, you'll see how this works. And that way, we'll have a pretty much completely dry system once all the fluid's uh, evacuated. I mean, we might have a drop here or there, but um, so that's going to be the first step. So let's get to it. And as you can see, guys, it's coming out coming out into the cup one thing to remember with this kit is you don't want any brake fluid to leave that cup and I'm just holding it with my feet right now but you don't want any brake fluid to leave that cup going towards the pump if it gets into the pump it will ruin the seals and ruin your pump so anyways just crack the valve with the bleeder screw <clears throat> and start pumping away until the cup gets full drain the cup keep on going all right the master cylinder is now out no fluid dropped anywhere on the paint so uh, the next step is we're gonna take the driver's seat out and uh, so we can access the four studs that are on the back of the fly or uh, the firewall and uh, see if this um, booster will come out easily or, for, or if it'll fight us on the way out all right well i removed the driver's seat it's just a lot easier to uh, access everything because you're gonna have to lay on your back um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have done this. Um, I didn't take apart the dash at all. Um, I was able to get to everything. You just have to be really nimble. Um, with a 9 16 both the box end and the open end wrench, you can actually access the nuts. Um, I'm going to see if this camera will uh, go up in here enough. But as you can see, the holes, there's two at the bottom. The top one is right there on the top left and then the top right is up there um again guys if you uh it takes a little longer but not much but if you use a 9 16 wrench um use either side that you can get to just to break the nut loose off the stud once they're broken loose enough I just spun the nut with my finger uh, all the way until they came off. So you don't have to sit there and they're, they shouldn't fight you off is what I'm trying to say all the way off. Um, so anyway, let's uh, see what the old booster looks like. Well, here's the old one, stock V8, uh, five liter booster. So you can tell this thing has seen better days. There's no fluid leaking from it, 
but just you know the gaskets torn and uh, I was hearing hissing when I was uh, pushing the brake pedal um, so I got this uh, used back in the day from a buddy of mine but there's no telling how long this thing had been uh, sitting out or what have you so who knows how long it's been bad and to be honest I can't even remember how long it's been hissing but I know it's been for a while so anyways while we're doing the brakes we're just gonna go ahead and uh, replace the booster Well, I went to the store and got the uh, Reman booster, so we're just going to go uh, with the stock V8 booster. The best thing to do is go with the Cobra, the 93 Cobra booster, um, but it's not the end of the world if you use a stock V8 booster. Um, I had a buddy with a car um, who had this same booster, just a regular stock V8 booster with Cobra brakes all the way around, and it was fine. Um, plenty of assist. So um, now if the motor was out of the car and it needed to go for paint, I'd go ahead and get a 93 Cobra booster and, uh, you know, bash the strut tower like I have to do on the, uh, up to the 1989 cars. I think the 90 through 93, the strut towers are a little different. They give you a little more room for the 93 Cobra booster. But anyways, I'm going to prep and prime this along with the rear North race car, uh, Cobra caliper brackets. I'm going to prime and paint them black and we'll go ahead and mount this booster. All right, we're gonna focus on removing this driver front caliper. I'm just gonna remove the whole assembly with the hose uh, as one unit. You can see, just as all Fox bodies, they clip in right here on this frame mount. So there is a C-clip right here that needs to be removed. I've already sprayed some penetrating oil on this flare nut and uh, hopefully it'll cooperate with us. And uh, let's go ahead and remove these. All right, you guys, if you notice, finally got the caliper and rotor off. Um, one thing about these SN95 spindles, if you're going to use, I think I mentioned this in the other video for wheels, but for the Autohan wheels, um, this is what I was talking about. So this is my dust cap. You just kind of tap it in, but under this dust cap, you'll see the spindle with the castle nut that holds the hub on. You'll want to cut about a half inch off of that stub and then put your cap back on, tap it flush and you'll be good to go. But anyways, let's get ready to put the new caliper on. This is my box of brake parts, uh, you know, that I acquired um, over last year. We'll just go over them. These are the uh, rear 8.8 .8 axle hard lines for disc. Since we're focusing on the front right now, of course, those will probably be the last things in the box. Uh, this is the e-brake, uh, the new e-brake cable. Not the actual cable, but, you know, what ties the two cables together. These are the uh, actual cables, the e-brake cables for a Fox body with discs. Up until 92 anyways. 93s were specific. So there's those. All right, what do we have here? It's been a while since I've been in this box. Got the 93 Cobra master cylinder. We're going to need that pretty soon. Uh, I am waiting on the booster to come in uh, from the parts store. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and tackle the front calipers while we're waiting. Uh, let's see here. More uh, e-brake cable parts. These are the, let's see here. Stainless steel brake, uh, stainless steel braid brake lines, if you will. This is the uh, rear hose kit. We'll tackle that later. It's going to be the uh... oh yeah these are the rear uh, Cobra caliper stainless steel braid hoses that go to the hard lines and what is this and this is what we want right here this is the Fox body basically stainless steel braid uh, hose kit for the front calipers. So this is what we're going to need next. And we have the proportioning valve. These are the rear Cobra caliper. Um, what do they call these? The anti-moan brackets. Definitely need these guys. Uh, later on in the video, I'll show you where these come in. A lot of guys uh, skimp on those. 
North race car caliper brackets. This will be coming up soon here in the video too, but uh, this is the Maximum Motorsports uh, 93 Cobra Master to Fox Body Conversion Brake Line Kit. Pretty sweet. I've used this on Ruby. And uh, this is the rear flex tube. That'll come later in the video. Some miscellaneous hardware, clips, and whatnot. And if I remember right, these are the calipers. So let's see what we have. It's been a while since I've been in this box. Yep. All right, so these are the Cobra calipers I'm going to be putting on the car. So there's one. Move that to the side. And then the opposite one. I, for one, like the Cobra calipers, guys. I mean, I'm just partial to the, uh, to the factory stuff. I mean, the Brembo stuff's pretty good. Uh, you know, what's coming out now, these huge brake caliper kits like quad piston and six piston and whatnot. But these will get your Fox body to stop on a dime, no doubt. So, uh, and I have the brackets too. Uh, I have to go get those. They're not in the box. But, uh, so this is what we're going to tackle next. All right, guys. Um, sorry I haven't been filming as much during the day uh, on this project as I uh, should have. But just ran into a lot of snags. And it's just one of those times where you just want to flat out get it. And uh, so now it's towards the end of the day. I'm, I'm whooped. Um, so anyways, here's some rotors some calipers um probably noticing why these washers are on here my wheels just barely touch the calipers uh when fully mounted so i'll probably just get either continue to use those washers or i'll get a 16th uh wheel spacer to space everything out but calipers stainless steel braid lines to the stock hard lines open up the hood this is where a lot of the time consuming stuff was happening right here finally got the new master in booster and master 93 cobra with the maximum motorsports fitting kit uh i really wish i would have uh filmed this but um guys it's pretty self-explanatory the maximum motorsports directions are very very easy to understand they have pictures but you can see where a lot of the time was just trying to break these fittings loose and you can only get just a little turn at a time and same thing going back in um i may end up tackling a wire tuck at a later date i don't think i'm going to do it all in the break video but um but day one is complete anyways so i got the fronts on booster master cylinder like i said the fittings here's the other side same thing so guys it was just kind of a pain there was a lot of uh, i had to run to the store get some parts too uh since we're going to tackle the rear uh you know i had to get some uh, diff fluid and a diff cover gasket and so on and so forth um also i had to get the uh pins the front hardware kit of with the supply chain issues only one store locally had them so and it wasn't exactly too local for me so all in all that was about three hours taken out of the day so i think tomorrow i'm going to start on the uh, rear so because pretty much the front's done so uh anyways let's start the rear all right well here we are at the back i've already drained the fluid popped the cover off the uh diff pulled the center pin out and i uh, pulled the axles out and i just removed the drum assembly so uh guys i'm sure you already know how to do all this stuff but uh we're gonna clean all this up and um put the new brackets on all right y'all one brackets on let's go to the other side all right well driver sides in so let's go ahead and take this tape off we'll put the axles back in put the center pin and the diff back in tighten the cross bolt Always put some red Loctite, just a drop. You don't need a ton of it, just a drop of Loctite. 
and uh, we'll clean the gasket surface on the face of the 8.8 .8 pumpkin and seal it back up. Once it's sealed back up, we'll go ahead and start working on the brakes and then finally, uh, you know, the tubing and whatnot. And uh, we'll top off the diff with oil. And don't forget your friction modifier. And uh, after that, guys, we can pretty much uh, start pumping the brakes and bleeding them. So let's get to it. All right, almost ready to put the cover on. Got the gasket right here. I put uh, Ultra Permatex Gray on the uh, face of the cover, and I also put the same Permatex Gray on the face of the uh, pumpkin where it mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this gasket on, and we'll go ahead and put the cover on. All right, pardon the mess, but uh, this is going to be the next to be installed. This is your junction block. This is the one I modify. Um, I think I uh, have a previous video on it, but since I'm going to reuse the four-cylinder hard line coming off the passenger side, uh, you take your stock 8.8 .8 housing junction block bracket, and uh, you go ahead and get this fitting, the block, 3.8 fitting, and then you get the normal... Uh, actual brake lines that go from the junction block to the uh, caliper so the way this is going to set up <clears throat> excuse me is your purple fittings are going to go towards the junction block your red fittings are going to go out towards the calipers so again pardon the mess but uh, this is just a basic description of how this works and these are from lmr uh, the actual ends some of this stuff i pieced together So let's go ahead and install this first, and then we'll go ahead and mount the lines. All right, guys, so the hard lines are mounted to the junction block on the diff, and they're just kind of set in place for now. Uh, these are next, and these are what's going to mount your uh, caliper to the hard lines. So let's go ahead and mount these. You may have to drill a hole. Some 8.8 .8 housings don't have this hole pre-drilled, uh, and this will be right near the um, shock mount on that same bracket. The 9495 Cobras, the housings already have the poles pre-drilled, um, but the earlier gens, you may have to drill a hole, so no big deal. Well, all right, guys, all the underneath is done. It's been a long day. But as you can see, I got the, uh, the hard lines mounted, the flex tubes, and uh, everything else is done. Rear end cover is on. Diff is filled with oil. One thing I want to go over with you guys, let's say, for example, if you've done a five lug conversion with drums and you get a similar axle like this, like these are the Moser 31 spline axles for drums, but let's say you want to upgrade to discs. This diameter here, this spindle, is smaller on the drums than it is on the rotors for a disc brake setup. So there's a solution for that because if you don't uh, use an adapter for this spindle, your rotor will be gyroscopically off so you want to make sure that it's perfectly centered or a hub centric rotor these are your solution right here so these are uh, hub adapters um, you can get these from I know from two different vendors but basically this allows you to still run a drum style axle but converting to disc so you just add these on and uh, you'll be good to go. So you won't have to get the axles that have the SN95 spindles on them. So anyways, we're going to put these on, put the rotors on, and start getting the calipers on. Alright, well I got the anti-moan bracket on and just got the bolt started. Lined everything up, everything's fine. One thing I want to go over with you guys, this is kind of a crucial step. So what you want to do is you want to mount your rotor. I just fix it so it's straight. I just put two of the lug nuts on. Uh, you want to mount this bracket first. What's critical is that the rotor falls in between this guide right here, that, that C notch in the bracket. You want to make sure it's centered. So what's going to dictate the centering is the, the two big mounting holes at the bottom. You can space those with washers to bring it in or well you can only go in so much but you can bring it out if you need to so um you may even need to have like one washer on one side and none on the other i've seen that before 
but the critical part is to get the rotor centered in this notch on both sides. And also, once you have it close, pull the axle in and out because you know there's some play in the axle and make sure the rotor doesn't hit either side of the inside of this bracket on the notches. So a very critical step. Once it's centered and it's free no matter what, you're good to go. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see this. It's probably pretty blurry. There we go. So as you can see, the rotor is perfectly centered. You can see daylight in between on the right side there and also on the left side. And then if you pull the rotor or pull the shaft in and out, still no hitting. That's what you want. So I had to use two washers on this setup. It's not going to be identical every time, but two washers top and bottom got me, uh, got me in. So once you tighten these, then you can go ahead and tighten your anti-moan brackets. Well, there it is, everyone. Everything's mounted. Everything under the car is done. I don't think I'm going to bleed the brakes today, but um, it's pretty much all that's left. Oh, I still have to put the, uh, the proportioning valve in. But uh, other than that, we're pretty much through here. Let me walk you over to the other side. And there you go. Well, all right, guys. I would expect if you have a five lug conversion already uh, and you want to go to Cobra Brakes, I would say you're looking at a solid weekend to do everything. And that's just one person. All right, guys, I know it's kind of hard to see in here. It's a little dark, but uh, I went ahead and gutted the uh, proportioning valve, the stock proportioning valve. As you can see, the master cylinder, booster, everything's installed. Along with the new proportioning valve right here. So, um, everything's installed, guys. Just got to bleed the brakes and uh, she'll be ready to go. Here we are inside the car, guys. Um, part of the conversion to make it complete is the e-brake uh, conversion, which I also did. Uh, pretty much per the LMR video, uh, shout out to LMR for uh, providing that instructional video. Everything went very, very smoothly. So guys, um, for safety's sake, uh, let's not forget to uh, add in the e-brake conversion. But uh, anyway, so this one works perfectly. It engages very, very low, uh, which is what you want. Um, so anyways... If you follow the video um, and buy their parts, it will definitely put you in the right direction. So this car is totally complete. All right, guys, while she's done, uh, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see everything. But uh, as you can see, there's the calipers, the pads, and everything's wearing very nicely. Um, I've bedded the pads in, obviously, and uh, <clears throat> couldn't be happier. Um, if there were some other things that I could have improved earlier on in the process, but this is going back years and years, um, I would have went with a Cobra booster, but just because the engine's already in here, uh, trying to fit the booster in with a 351 with Cook's one and seven eighths long tubes to have a Cobra booster go in here along with massaging the strut tower. It was just a little more than I wanted to do to the car. Um, after driving it a while with a stock replacement refurbed booster, um, it will work. It, uh, it does work, guys. Uh, there's a few limitations with this particular setup. Uh, the braking is substantially better, but I will say that it's not the coupe. It's not Ruby uh, for a few different reasons. Number one, the cam in this motor is a lot bigger than what's in Ruby. Uh, the red coupe. Uh, this has a very monstrous hydraulic roller cam. It's a 236, 248, uh, 114 split, um, 579 on both sides. Pretty big lift cam, pretty wide duration. Um, even uh, so, that's one topic that's kind of a limitation. The other one, as I said before, is the booster. Um, 
with those two things, uh, smaller cam and a Cobra booster, which is probably what most of you guys would be running anyway, um, you'll have excellent results. I'm still very pleased with uh, the improvement that what I have now uh, has accomplished. So definitely recommend it, guys. So I'm going to go over this uh, one more time. 93 Cobra Master Cylinder. On this particular setup, instead of using the Maximum Motorsports, I think it's the BAK uh, stock proportioning valve bypass fittings. I just used the stock proportioning valve, gutted it like normal, and got the Maximum Motorsports plug. Um, that worked very well. Got the Ford Racing uh, manual proportioning valve, as seen earlier. These front calipers are actually the 99 to 04 calipers, but I did paint them. Uh, I did scuff, sand them, and then obviously scuff the logo like stock. But these are the ones that come like lighter gray, the 99 to 04 calipers. I think they have a twin 44, I want to say, piston caliper, or 46. I think they're a little bit bigger than the 94 to 98. But either way, um, they're very similar. So that's for the front. And of course, all the stainless steel braid hoses, as you've seen. And then stock track width, rear. But again, using factory Ford calipers, the Varga brand. That's who makes these calipers for Ford. You guys can do what you want. There's some aftermarket calipers, rear calipers, and fronts for that matter that are made overseas. Um, when it comes to brakes in particular, I'd like to have OEM equipment if I can. Is it a little more expensive? Yes. But I think in something like this, it's definitely well worth it. Um, so yeah, so these are remanufactured factory Ford Varga calipers that I've painted um, black instead of the factory cast iron. Rear end in this is a stock Fox 8.8 .8 housing. So it's a stock track width. Uh, the car, again, vast improvement from what was before. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, and I'll get back with you. Thanks for sticking around.